Hey guys, Mario here, back with a revision of a tutorial that is so bad, I didn't even want to watch it myself. But, we are going to be revising my animation sprites video. Mostly because it is relatively bad and there's not many tips that go along with it that you should keep in mind. So let's get started. So first things you want to do is actually render your animation as a PNG sequence. So my software actually comes with a uh, um, export as PNG sequence. Um, there are plenty of free software that you can use to render as a PNG sequence. Um, you can also render as alpha if you're using After Effects as well. I'm not going to do that for the safety of my video. <laughs> So do keep, do keep in mind that you want to make your animations at a low quality because uh, Roblox compresses the image to about uh, 1023 by 1023 regardless of scale. Um, so yeah, you do want to keep in mind that. Um, you also want to keep in mind that if you want to, if you for bigger projects you want to use separate images. Um, so with that out of the way, uh, we render that and we move on to the next part. So the next part we have here is actually glue it. Um, you can find it through uh, KFX's GitHub repository, or you can probably download it from Softonic. It's also a link in the description that leads you directly to the download. So once you have that, you want to click add and you want to add your files. So I will do that. And once you've added it, you can hold shift and select them all um, uh, from beginning to end. As mine, as you can see, I selected mine from beginning to end. So now that we've done that, we can press um, glue it. But actually, before we want to do that, is we want to change this number of columns to six. And then we can press glue it. So what you'll see is a preview will come up. And you can brush, just press close. Or if you want to have a look at the preview, you can. Actually, another thing you do want to keep in mind is that you are at about 15 to 25 FPS is um, most desirable for uh, making the sprites because it you do not, if you, for bigger projects, I do recommend 15 FPS, but you can go higher. It is more time consuming because you have to set up each one, but I'm sure there's going, you can do a loop uh, easily for each one. So... Uh, now that we have that, we can save it, and we can just save it as a new image. I'm going to save this. Uh, you can easily, obviously just save it as the sprite name or whatever you want to save it as. That's cool as well. <coughs> so, now that we are in Roblox, you can import it um, to Studio, and if you are working in a blank base plate to try this, you do want to keep in mind that you have to publish your place before you can upload images directly. Um, otherwise, you can go to the Roblox um, manually. Uh, so what you can do now is, you, after you've added it, you'll see that everything is kind of weird. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to scroll down to Image Rect. Um, I'll set off the side here, you probably cannot see it, so I'll move it right there. So yeah. So now you can see image rect size, image rect offset. So what I'm gonna set to is I'm gonna set it to preset one. I I do recommend for this that you download the actual picture. Like I have mine saved as and if you could, if you were, to be able to see it. Um my mouse is actually hovering over it. <laughs> There's the uh, size. The size will be noticeably uh, 1,023. Um, depending on what you have, the height uh, will also be different. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, if you're working with squares, which I recommend you do, it's very, it's much better. You want to get the rough size. Um, you can do decimals as well. Uh, mine is 102, so that is why I used 102.3, because that's it's about it's about the right size. So now that we have that, um, we can you know I just move this back. We can start with the actual coding. 
So what we're going to do is insert a new local script. And we are going to start with the three main things that we need for an infinite loop. So if we are going to have this infinitely loop, which we are, is we are going to start with the frame index. So this is what frame is on. It's mostly useless, mostly useless in the way I coded it, because I'm stupid. But it also works uh, for an extra thing that you will see in a moment. So for the sprite columns, we're going to name that sprite columns and you can set that to how many columns i chose six you can choose whatever you want when you render out your uh your sprite if you're doing it along with me i'm very sorry so and the last we want to have is the playable or total frames um just keep in mind that this is the total amount of frames you want to play <coughs> so now that we have that is we can make a while loop so if we make a while loop, if I do while wait do, basically what it's doing it is calling on wait every time and it waits for the lowest integer or the lowest um, amount of time that Roblox can actually stall. So once you just press enter, it will create end for you, um, and then you can kind of uh, open up some space, and we're gonna make it what we what is called a for loop. So if we do for i equals one. This is the first index of the loop. So what this means is that we start on the number 1. So we put a comma, and the next will be sprite column. So what we're going to do is that for for every single sprite column, so 6, it there will do something. So when we press enter, this is we are going to use for our sprite columns. So for our index, what we're going to do, because... I'm stupid and I coded it completely stupid. We are going to do frame index plus equals one. And what this means is basically frame index equals frame index plus one. So it's literally just making frame index add one, essentially. So it's a much shorter way of doing it. Next, what you want to do is you want to do frame index equals playable frames. I'm stupid, I forgot that the S. We're going to do minus 1 because it's odd when we start on 1, but there's actually 0 is counted as a frame. Um, so then we just press enter. And for inside of this, we're going to do script.parent.image rect offset equals vector two dot new so if um you're having any trouble with this uh, what you can actually do is when you're typing you can press tab and that is a beginner's thing that you should know i haven't made any sort of tutorial in a certain order so just kind of a heads up and once that's done we can do frame index zero so we're just re resetting the frames if it reaches the maximum amount of frames minus one so and because we're doing this for every column it will check every single time because it adds a frame so now we can just break it this all this does is take us back to here so it will just break it and we will be inside of here again in the wait loop which is what we want so then now we want to do an other another if statement if i equals sprite columns then we're going to do another one this ready script dot parent dot image rect offset equals vector 2 Dot new. This is where things get a little bit complicated. So what we're actually doing here is offsetting it so the sprite will play in the based off of the size because the offset is not actually per sprite. So per frame is basically so if we if the, if we make this back to maybe uh, fifty, okay, that's a little small. We would do two fifty. So for each frame. Because our size is set to 1 to 2.3, we move the frame uh, for 1 to 
So basically, because the offset, if I did 102.3 right now, and I did 0, it would move it to the next frame, basically. Because 102.3 is the size, and the offset is not the scale. So, now we can finish this off with script.parent.image right offset dot y plus script.parent dot image red size dot x which is just kind of a lazy way of doing it you could do y you could do either one if you're working with a square i am so it's easy if you are not working with a square you would set this to y um for now i could actually keep it either one but that is my situation not yours so now for this, since this is a check, that we're checking if i equals columns, because we gotta make sure that we're still in the same column. So we're gonna do script.parent.image right offset equals vector two dot new script.parent.image right offset. It's very self-explanatory at this point. We're getting the offset and adding it with the size. So we do script.parent.image right size dot x. And this is already the first value, it literally gives you a tooltip here. And for the second value, but for the second one, we're just adding the size. Script.parent.image, right, the offset, dot y. And because I'm stupid, we have to do this. This is kind of necessary, there's no, there's no add, there's no way to just add one. I mean, there is, but I'm stupid, so. Yeah, very fun. And now, underneath this, we add a wait. So every time we do this loop, it stalls the code for a certain amount of time, unless the code is broken. So what we're actually going to do is set this wait to 0 0.04, because our frame rate is 25. And you got to do some kind of janky math. But So now, if we press play, if I'm not stupid, and it works exactly as intended, and there you go. So you can see there is some slight twitching if you look intensely. And it's also very low quality because it's been crushed down to uh, 1,023 20, uh, 1, pixels. But it still looks relatively good. So that's all that matters to me. <laughs> so what you can actually do is if you do not like the anti-aliasing, we can set the resample mode to pixelated. It's right underneath the image rights. Uh, offset. Um, it's very simple to just simple fix for pixel art, uh, especially if uh, you are using it for pixel art. It works flawlessly. So here we actually are going to be re reusing code, but with a little bit of a twist. So what we're actually going to need now is we're going to need the rows um, because again I'm stupid and I coded it wrong, but this works. Okay, if you, if you want to expand on this idea, I'm totally down for it. So, I have 10 rows in my picture. I counted this prior to coding. So, I put 10 right there. There's no strings attached. Now, for the final um, variable we're going to need is clicked. So, for clicked, we're going to set that to false, and that's just detecting if it's clicked. So, since we are a developer, we want to copy and paste as much code as possible. So, that is what we are going to do. So, I copied that one. And now we're going to replace it with script dot parent dot mouse button one click connect function and set this function to nothing. So, now we have an empty function. What we're going to do is we're actually going to do click because obviously we are detecting if the script the parent has been clicked which is the button and now we can move down so i'm gonna make this look a little bit neater and we're gonna actually print right here print which just prints into the console down here and we're gonna print oops button clicked so i'm gonna do four i equals one and now we're gonna factor it in the sprite rows, which is relatively the same. So if I type in sprite rows, if I can type, do, and it's easily pasted in just like that. Nothing else. So everything else is relatively the same. Um, we just need to add one thing here, 
which will be clicked equals false because we are breaking, remember, we are breaking this loop. And what that means is we are ending the loop prematurely before it can do anything else. So now that it is done, it, we are going to, actually, we are done now that I'm looking at it. So we can just press play, and I think it should work, but I'm kind of dumb sometimes. So if I click it, and it works, and it loops all the way back. To repress it, it retracts back, and all's good. So now, since I've made a loop animation, what I'm actually going to do is a quick way to stop it. So, a really simple and easy way to stop is to just change the playable frames. So, for example, my at the end of my playable frames, I counted, would be 36. And it is going to be a little bit iffy. It's going to keep playing because of the sprite rows. So we actually want to remove that functionality entirely. And we are going to set that to 6 because we don't want it glitching out. But what we do want to do is we want to actually take this because and copy it because we cannot bring the break with us. The break only works for loops and among other things. And we can delete it. Or for my purposes, I'm going to comment it. And commenting it just makes it disappear or not to run with the code. And now that we've done that, we can use this and paste it in right there. I recommend that you do this to or maybe use a debounce because if you use a de they can just kind of spam it. Here, I'll actually give you an example. They can spam it and it'll just glitch out continuously like that. And, uh, yeah, it had a heart attack. But it fixes itself anyway. So, yeah, as you can tell, it's permanent. And it looks really cool. So, I recommend you do it. It looks awesome. It is awesome. Bada bing.